Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Um, Brother Moses, I love y'all. Um, Jesus is alive and well. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. God is for us and not against us. He's an amazing God. He's an amazing God. I just had a couple announcements this morning. Um, a couple reminders. Uh, first thing I want to just say is that I just want to encourage you and remind you to use your tools. Ask God, ask the ask Holy Spirit to bring into your remembrance the opportunities um, to break the yoke of flesh, to break strongholds through which demons have access to our life. Um, do whatever if you if in doubt know what to do, whatever the flesh wanna do, do the opposite. Pray that the Spirit will bring you into remembrance of whatever was taught on Saturday that was pertaining to you, praise God. I also encourage you to make yourself available for one another, to confess, to release burdens of the heart without judgment. Praise God. So the first thing I want to speak about is what the Holy Spirit is urging me to speak about. Who believed our report? Oh, well, the report of the Lord is this. It's to forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. God has forgiven us. He didn't make us jump through a whole bunch of hoops to receive the forgiveness. But yet us, we make other people jump through 30,000 hoops just to receive forgiveness. We want, to, we want them to prove to us that they're worthy of our forgiveness. You know, when forgiveness is something that God gave freely. And um, maybe it's somebody that you put away privately. Like you don't talk to them as much. You know, you think it's a godly thing. You think you move past that relationship and it's possible that you just haven't forgiven them. Like, Whatever it is, maybe you have forgiven them verbally or by faith, but yet you still wrestle with it in your heart every time the enemy brings it to your remembrance. Forgive. That's why Jesus said forgive. They asked him how many times in a day, and Jesus said 70 times 70. 70 times 7. Why? Because sometimes the enemy continues to remind you of the offense as to cause you to relive it. And every time you're reminded of it, you have to forgive again. So that's the word of the Lord, forgive. Jesus taught this. He said that if, if you don't forgive others, God will, will not forgive you. He didn't say it's a possibility. He let you know that you, you won't have access to forgiveness from God. And that's something that we all need. So release those people that may offended you, whatever it may be, from 30 years ago. If you don't, if you, I will encourage you to do the same thing I did. Ask Holy Spirit to bring into your remembrance if there's anyone that you really haven't forgiven. Praise God. My second announcement is, um, you know, I, I believe that God is calling me to a fast again. I know some of you have been fasting last week. We, we fasted a couple weeks ago. But committing our body as a living sacrifice is a reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So me personally, um, I will not be on social media besides Periscope. I won't be on Facebook Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, none of those things. Like, I'm sacrificing it. It take up too much time. I could be doing something constructive. So those, I'm going to fast social media, and I'm also going to do one meal a day. Now, I'm not commanding you to do it. But I'm admonish you as a brother to take a fast in consideration. God wants us to be sensitive to his spirit like never before. God wants the flesh to die. You know, we can't, the place that God want to take us, we can't, we cannot take the things, some of the things that we do currently. We cannot take it there at all. It's unacceptable. God is not accepting it. You know, sometimes we try to just make God receive anything. We cannot take it. We cannot. Which means if you try to hold on to that thing, you may miss an opportunity in this season. You know, you may miss the promised place that God want to take you to. You can't take it there. That's why the Israelites roamed, there, roamed in the wilderness for 40 years. Because they could not take certain things into their promised land. Okay? So I just want to share that. Um, um, I also wanted this. So I'm, I'll be fasting for this week. Probably from today till Friday, praise God. Or if the Lord changes his mind, whatever he want to do. You know, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, commit your body a living sacrifice. 
Maybe you haven't been on social media. Maybe it's something else then. But for me, it's social media. And I would admonish you. It's not a commandment of the Lord. But I would admonish every single person in Royal Claw to do the same thing. Do the same thing. And one meal a day. So you feel inspired by the Holy Spirit to follow what I'm doing. Praise God. Um, the next thing I want to talk about. Saturday. We are still going on a nature walk. We are still going on a nature walk. I want to get there at I want to get there at least by two o'clock. So if you it's in um, Marlton, New Jersey, I believe, on Route 73, up by Splash World, I believe it is. It's up towards that direction. So if you want to meet, if you want to just meet me there, praise God. If you want to meet me at my house or a neutral place, then let's try to meet there at 1.30. Want to meet at my house? Let's just say for right now, at my house at 1:30. Like at 1:30. If you can't be there at 1:30, just let somebody know, and we can meet there. The place closes at four, but you can still walk the nature walk. We'll use the pavilion. We'll have sandwiches. We'll bring drinks. We can stay there in fellowship if everybody's comfortable. If it's too hot, too muggy, whatever, too many bugs, we can bring bug spray, or you know, we can fellowship at my house. But I like the fellowship outside. I know some of you guys want to change the scenery. So I think it would be a blessing. Okay. Just a couple other announcements. Just to encourage you. Um, God is really moving. And people been. Prophetic people have been speaking that God is. In the, it's in the seasons to come. That out of the mouth of babes. God is going to perfect praise. God is going to use the little ones. And I really believe that. Um. I want you to look up, it's Royce Man, R-O-Y-C-E, A, I mean, R-O-Y-C-E is his first name, M-A-N-N, -N. and he did a spoken word on a show called The Preachers, so YouTube it, Royce Man, spoken word on The Preachers, The Preachers is a new daytime show, I've got some of the preachers on there, they're giving the angles, praise God. I just I was gonna share it on Saturday, but the Lord didn't. The Lord chose to do something different, so His will be done. But I, I would encourage you to to watch that video. It's a blessing. It's a young man giving a spoken word, but it's about a lot of uh, about obviously our current situations with all the divisions, white versus black, all the stuff like that. So a spoken word was really a blessing. It really touched my heart. And it really confirmed that God is really using the vacation Bible school. All these things is confirming that God is doing something in the children. God is raising up children that is able to, that, that will be, that will be a reflection of the solution of what this world needs, which is unity and love. So I encourage you to, to, to look at that. Um, a couple things I wanted to talk about. And, and you know, with all this police brutality and all these type of things taking place, racism, blah, 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 police brutality against young black people. It is an issue in America. It's more about hatred and division, but it is an issue. Please keep it in prayer because people are being lost. Families are being destroyed. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And God said that you have weapons that you can destroy the enemy. So let's just be prayerful on it. But... In my hometown, Rochester, New York, this really blessed me because I was praying to God to bring authentic solutions that could really bring people together and bring unity. And somebody in Rochester, New York, which is my hometown, they came up with an idea to have a kickball game for the city. So every Sunday now, they have a kickball game, and it's a huge success. People came out from all over all different hoods, all different neighborhoods, you know. The division now is just white and black. You know, it'd be light skin versus dark skin, this culture versus this culture, this block versus this block, city, you know what I mean? This half of the east side versus west side, all these divisions. But everybody was able to come together. It wasn't no fights. It wasn't it was all positive. You know, some people, they ain't, they ain't all believers, so some of them, they still kind of carnal. But the mere fact that it was something, instead of protesting and trying to force our demands on the, ju uh, the justice system and all that, 
They came together. They had a kickball game. The first game was all African Americans that united. Then the second game, the, you know, the radio station put together a team. The officers put together a team. The mayor put together a team. And it is this huge kickball league now, like, to unite everybody. And I was praising God so much because I said, God, we need another solution. Marching and protesting and all this stuff is not the solution. It's just a breeding ground for anger, hatred, racism. So I was praising God. And I just share that to say that God is moving by a spirit. He's answering prayers. God is behind some things like, and we don't always get the chance to see what God is doing. What is his answer to prayer? So that was one of the answers to one of my prayers. So I was just grateful, wanted to share it with everybody that God is bringing solutions. God is behind the scenes. The Bible says when evil was present, good was also present, you know. The Bible says when good was present, evil was present. So unfortunately, we may see these, you know, we may see these two things at different times. But just know that God is up to something. All right. I got a couple other announcements. I wanted to give a health tip. You know, the health tip I want to give, because this is supposed to do on Saturday, but we didn't get a chance. The health tip I want to give is, is this. That, um... It's my turn. No, okay. The health tip I want to give is this. And this, this was given to us on church on Thursday for the health thing. Is that you walk. Take your family for a walk. Even if it's around the block. Even if it's around the park. Even if it's around the track. Never despise small beginners. Maybe you're not going to go to the gym and do a, a, a two-hour workout. Like, but take take your family on the on a walk. It's benefiting you from walking and getting exercise and not just sitting in the house all day. It's benefiting your children because it's going to allow them to exhaust some energy. energy and it's a health tip for them. But it's going to allow them to exhaust some energy, be outside. Help because some of your children be running rampant all over the world. <laughs> some of our children be extra hype, so it helped them exhaust some energy. And it's something that you can do positive as a family, it's good family time. So, the health tip is take your family on a walk. I'm not saying you should do it every day, once a week, you know, it's just a good health tip, I believe, and I wanted to share it. Okay, another health tip is this. This, was, this one was coming from the Father. Like I was thinking about that help tip, and this is what the Spirit gave me. Like that, I should sacrifice. Just try it for this one week, just to get started. No sweet drinks. No sweet drinks. No soda. No sweet beverages. Water. Unsweetened tea. So that's where I'm at with it. You know. We think that these things only affect our physical health, but it also affects your mental health. It also affects your emotional health. You know, sometimes we emotionally unstable and we wonder why. Like, all the toxins and sugars in our drinks, like. So, it affects, and it also affects our spiritual health. Yes. It affects your spiritual health. What you eat and drink naturally. So, the Lord did just put it on my heart. And I share with all of you to go one week just to get things started without any sweet beverages. So I'm not. I got this V8 splash over here. I guess I'm not going to be able to drink it. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to drink water. Praise the Lord. And that's that's another health tip. The financial tip I have for you, for us. Now, I was thinking of a good one, but this is the one I believe the Lord gave me. That's why I'm taking time to share it now. The Lord, I place it upon my heart that a lot of times we spend an excess money on an on a, on a excess bill. Like, maybe it's something you want. Maybe it's not something sinful. But the Lord already admonished us to simplify our lives. So, pray about one thing. God is going to tell you. So, amen. But ask God about one thing. That you can sacrifice. One expense. That you can sacrifice. Maybe you eat out every day. You know. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe you spend five dollars a day. On lottery tickets. I don't know. Maybe it's the cable. Like. 
an unnecessary expense. All you got to do is ask God. He's going to tell you exactly what it is. Okay? One unnecessary expense that you can sacrifice. That's my financial tip. Simplifying your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, is there anything else, Father God? Praise the Lord. I did take about the trip. All right, so that's all my announcements. I love you guys. I pray you have a blessed day. If anything else I remember, then I'll just probably have to text it because this video is already 15 minutes long. I know I'm testing your patience. It's an opportunity to break the stronghold. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Peace and blessings, everybody. I love y'all. Keep me in prayer, my family, and I'll do the same for you.